You and I know certain people in this life who've built for themselves such a reputation of honesty that they would prefer to die as opposed to failing in a promise that they had given. If such is the status of a promise in the eyes of some human beings, what then is the status of a promise in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, who has given himself names like Al-Haq, the truth, and Al-Barr, the ever doer of good, and Al-Kareem, the most generous, what would he do? Subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he has made a promise, look at what he says in the Quran in answering this question, Inna Allah la yukhliful mi'ad. Allah never fails in his promise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Inna ma tu'aduna la sadiq. What you have been promised is true. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Inna ma tu'aduna la waqi'. Surely what you have been promised has come to pass, must come to pass. Subhanallah. Why is it that people break their promises to begin with? It's usually because of either the promise itself was a lie to begin with, or number two, because of an inability later on to act upon the promise that you had made in the past. And this is precisely why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never fails in a promise that he had made. Because number one, Allah Almighty is above lying. And hence, lying is not a possibility. Number two, he is able to do all things and therefore being unable to act upon a promise is also not a possibility. And this is why Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said, وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِعَهْدِهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ Who is truer to his covenant than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the implied answer is, nobody. With that said, let us take a look at some of the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of which must come and will come to pass if the conditions are met. Promise number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised those who practice Islam inwardly and outwardly a pleasant, happy life. Allahu Akbar. In no era in human history have the means of comfort and welfare ever been so within reach like they are today. And never has the knowledge of the world's complex mysteries and our ability to uh, subdue nature's unfriendly elements ever been attained like they have today. And despite these remarkable achievements at so many fronts, and in spite of possessing all of the means for a better life, that goal, that objective of reaching and living a pleasant life and feeling mental happiness has never drifted further away from our shores like it has today. I know that you will agree when we say that the 21st century has taught people how to fly in the air like birds and how to swim in the oceans like fish, but how to walk on the face of the earth as happy and content, satisfied individuals, many of us still don't know how to do this. Now the variables, there, there, there are many, but according to Muslims, there is one chief variable in unlocking and finding this gem called happiness. Where is it to be found? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَآمَنُوا بِمَا نُزِّلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَهُوَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ كَفَّرَ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَأَصْلَحَ بَالَهُمْ And those who believe, focus on the conditions, those who believe, and they do righteous deeds, and they believe in that which was sent to the Prophet وسلم, as it is the truth from their Lord, what will Allah do for them? Look at the end of the ayah, He will erase from them their sins, He will improve their state. That is a promise from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Whoever does good, whether male or female, and he is a believer, we will most certainly make him live a happy life. 
whoever believes that happiness can somehow be found in other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's obedience has shown the worst of thought and the worst of expectation regarding Allah. Take it as a rule in your life, dear brother, dear sister. Your soul's fatigue is according to how far or close it is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is precisely why the reason why Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he said to his servant when they were traveling, looking for a man called Al-Khadr, Musa began to feel tired. He said to his servant, bring us our morning meal because we have suffered so much in our journey and we are experiencing fatigue. Commenting on this statement of Prophet Musa, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, Musa only felt tired the moment he had passed the area that he was commanded to go to. Musa was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to meet a particular person in a particular destination. Musa, however, did not realize that he had accidentally gone past that particular place where Allah wanted him to be. And it was at that point when he had crossed this area that his soul began to fatigue. It was a sign. Therefore, dear brother, dear sister, say the same to your soul. Oh my soul, if you have fatigued, then it is a sign that you have crossed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's limit somewhere and that you're standing where he does not want you to stand. As for promise number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised those who live a life of Islamic practice, love within the hearts of people. Where is that promise found? This is in Surah Maryam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Surely those who believe, Allah said, and they do good deeds, Allah will bring about for them love. What does this love refer to, I hear you ask? Abdullah ibn Abbas, the companion, radiallahu anhu, he gives an explanation. He said it means that people in this world, they will love him. And the words of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established this exact same meaning. He would say in a beautiful narration, he would say that there isn't any person except that they have a reputation in the heavens. And therefore, if his reputation there in the heavens is good, it will be placed on earth as well. But if his reputation in the heavens is a bad one, it too will be placed here on earth. Therefore, what people are saying about you today is a reflection of what you are being spoken about above. And the opposite, by the way, is just as true. And that is why Uthman ibn Affan, any person, he said, who does good or evil, Allah will clothe him with the garment of his deeds. So, in other words, what you are insisting on doing behind closed doors, dear brother, dear sister, whether it is something good in private or something evil and treacherous in private, it's only going to be a matter of time before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it public. That is promise number two. Promise number three. Allah Almighty has promised that Islam will remain until the day of judgment. Listen to this prophecy, dear brothers and sisters, that you are about to hear. A prophecy of our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that really couldn't have come at a better time. A narration which Muslim narrates on the authority of the companion Thoban, the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah drew the ends of the world for me to see. And I have seen its eastern and western ends, and I saw that the kingdom of my ummah will reach those ends that I saw, the east and west. Allah has also given me the two treasures, the red and the white. And these are in references to places that the Messenger Wasallam's kingdom would eventually reach. And I begged my Lord for my Ummah that number one, it should not be destroyed because of famine. And I begged my Lord number two, that it is never to be dominated by an enemy who is not from it, who would then eradicate them. And now Allah is about to give the Prophet Wasallam the outcome of his dua, his request. Was it granted or not? O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever I make a decision, I, Allah, make a decision and it cannot be changed. And so I have granted for you that your ummah, your nation, will never be destroyed by means of famine. Subhanallah. What about the second dua that he made? Listen to the answer. And I have decreed that you will never be dominated, you and the Muslims, by an enemy who would not be from them, even if the entire world were to join hands with the intention of doing so. 
Allahu Akbar. So this is a promise that couldn't have come at a better time for our bruised ummah. A promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is fulfilled, by the way, in several ways. You may say to me, how is it that Allah Almighty will ensure and decree that this religion will remain until the end of time? I say to you, consider these several mechanisms. Number one, by the frequent sending of revivalists. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he would say, Allah Almighty sends, he said, for this ummah, at the end of each 100 years, those who will revive the religion. Revivalists, may Allah meet you and I from amongst them. That's one mechanism by way this religion will be preserved till the end of time. What else you may say to me? Number two, by Allah Almighty taking it upon His divine self to preserve the Qur'an. Allah said, we were the ones who revealed the Qur'an and we shall be its guardians. It shall never change and it can never change in its meaning nor can it ever change in its wording. Promise from Allah. Number three, a third mechanism by protecting a particular group of Muslims who will remain upon the truth till the end of time even if the masses end up becoming corrupt. The Prophet wasallam he would say, speaking about this, he said, there will always be a group from my ummah who will be prevalent with the truth. And they will not be harmed by those who let them down till the command of Allah comes to pass. Therefore, the Muslim who believes in these promises will not despair regardless of how great the hostility that Islam and Muslims may face. Why? Because Allah Almighty never fails in His promises. That is promise number three. Promise number four, the resurrection must happen. This day, the last day, the final day is so certain that one of its names is al al Ma'ud, the promised day. Allah said, وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الْبُرُوجِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَوْعُودِ Allah said, I swear by the sky that is containing the great stars and I swear by the promised day. That promised day is the day of judgment. Abdullah ibn Abbas, the companion, he would say in explanation of this ayah, Allah Almighty has promised the inhabitants of the heavens and the inhabitants of the earth that they will all meet on that day. Always in a state of repentance, having realized that ahead of us is a very long journey that awaits, that begins with death. It begins with death. That is promise number four. The resurrection is on its way. It has to happen. Promise number five. Allah Almighty has promised those who courageously reject a sinful practice with that which is better. Ya Allah, this is a promise that provides so much strength and peace and solace and reassurance particularly to that young Muslim man or that young Muslim woman who may be uh, struggling with a specific addiction of some sort or a particular private doing that they know will distance them from Allah and will distance them from success in the hereafter. Abu Qatada and Abu Dahma they said we came to a Bedouin man they said and we said to him, have you heard any knowledge from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Did you ever hear him say anything? He said that I heard him say, there isn't anything that you leave for the sake of Allah, except that he will replace you with something better. What is that? That is a promise, dear brother, dear sister. Now don't get me wrong, such a replacement may be delivered to you in an obvious fashion, right? So you have a prohibited relationship of some sort that you cut out. And so Allah replaces you with a wonderful, pure, halal relationship or an impermissible business dealing that you cut out. And so Allah replaces you with a better business dealing, right? And so on. But at the same token, the form of the reward, the replacement, it may arrive in different fashions. It may in the, come in the form of health for your children or cure from an illness that was on its way of, to you to cripple you or a beautiful and righteous spouse, or an ability to pray at night that you were maybe previously struggling with. Allah may replace that sin that you left for His sake in an obvious way, and He may replace it in a way that is better for you. And that is because Allah Almighty knows what is best for you, and therefore the reward for your courageous rejection of the haram is tailored for what you need most, even if you don't realize that you need it. Make the courageous decision from this moment onwards to make amends to those habits, those relationships, those secret doings, 
that you know need evicting from your life, dear brother, dear sister, and then realize that the better replacement from Allah has already been dispatched and it is on its way. Allahu Akbar. As for our sixth and final promise, this is the following. The outcome of patience will be paradise. That's patience, by the way, in all three of its forms. As-sabru ala al-maqdur, patience towards what has been decreed for you. As-sabru ala al-ma'mur, patience towards the obligations of Islam. As-sabru ala al-mahdur, patience towards the prohibitions of Islam. All three of these levels, they require so much patience and your struggle with them will eventually drive you to paradise. Why? Because Allah Almighty has promised that. Let us read the ayah so that they may soothe our hearts. لَهُمْ فِيهَا مَا يَشَاءُونَ خَالِدِينَ كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ وَعْدًا مَسْؤُولًا In Jannah, Allah said, everything that they may wish for will be there for them. Living inside eternally. And then he said, this is a promise binding upon your Lord that must be fulfilled. Allahu Akbar. And Allah Almighty, he said, Allah mentions that those who have feared their Lord were conscious of Him, they shall be given high mansions above them, higher mansions, built for them one above the other, beneath which rivers flow. And then Allah said, this is the promise of Allah, and Allah will never fail in His promise. And Allah Almighty said, the angels will meet them on that day, saying to them, this is the day which you have been promised, Allahu Akbar. Allah therefore has made the promise, you have heard them, and now it's upon you and me to meet the conditions with patience. We ask Allah Almighty to make us from amongst those people.